First off, the people want to see you. Meet and greet. Oh, he does. Oh, that's where the magic happens. We love it here. Just kidding. Look at that one. Underground ponds. Cross contaminations. Falling on a budget. Lots of color. The auction will end Friday. Big baller lane. Koi fish lost its color. <laughs> Aloha, my ohana. It is your boy, back with another aquatic adventure. Now, if you're new to the channel, we talk about everything in the aquarium, Mojave, and your boy's got a banger for you today. We're here in West Sacramento at Koi Enterprise. Now, there's a couple reasons why I'm here at Koi Enterprise. First off, we're here to pick up a beautiful koi. Second, Quintero Koi Auction is up and running. Go check it out, all right? I'll have his link down in the description below. All you basically do is click the link, go down a little bit where it says Koi Auction, click Koi Auction and see the beautiful koi fish that Anthony has on display for auction. I believe the auction will end Friday, this Friday. So jump on it, okay? Some beautiful Goshiki, Tancho Kohaku, Showa. Also, you don't want to miss Black Friday. Mark it down in your calendars right now, November 24th, here at Koi Enterprise, his largest koi sale of the year. So you don't want to miss it. I'm talking prices 50% off he's gonna have mark bins out here it is a big festival not only that though get an opportunity to hang out and meet your boy i'll be here doing a meet and greet from 9 in the morning to 12 noon november 24th okay the koi enterprise black friday sale don't want to miss now koi enterprise sits on a little over an acre it's a beautiful lush garden out here in west sacramento as i like to call it an amusement park for adults it's got some of the most beautiful japanese koi fish in the area ranging from all prices from 50 dollars to multiple thousands of dollars this place is totally geared towards the whole family bring your kids it's absolutely awesome to walk the property the kids will absolutely love it here i promise you. There are so many above ground ponds full of beautiful Japanese koi fish. Hey, look at you guys. Oh, these are koi fish that are probably going to go on the future live sale. Oh, these are some stunners in here. These are all Tosai, which is one year and under. Oh, wow. I see some beauties in here. Yeah, these are definitely live koi sale fish. I can tell by the quality and the style. Oh, these guys pack a punch. I see beautiful Asagis in here. Ooh, beautiful Goshiki, Golden Corn, He Uturi, Showa, Sanke, Platinum, Ginrin Platinum. Oh, some beautiful Shisui in here too as well. Oh yeah, this is a prime tank right here. Now in the far back of the property, there's also some more underground ponds that have even more koi. Let's go check them out. Now, all of these below ground ponds have koi fish that aren't for sale. They're merely going through the process of quarantine. Whoo, hi babies. Let me take a look at you, all right? The people want to see you. Ooh, look at those beautiful Goromo, Sanke. Ooh, Kohaku in here. Some beautiful reds. Look at the reds in this, huh? Ooh, love this, love this, love this. Now, if you're a big baller <coughs> like myself, just kidding. Anyways, over my shoulder here is the infamous greenhouse. You know, a lot of people say, oh, that's where the magic happens. <laughs> well, here at Koi Enterprise, that's where Anthony's magic happens in there. Big baller Koi, but not only that though, that's where he actually does his quarantining. Very, very intense quarantine system that he does. Um, and we get a sneak peek, okay? So shh, don't tell anybody, all right? Check out the greenhouse. Okay, so this is a glimpse in the inside of the greenhouse. Above ground ponds filled with beautiful Japanese koi fish. And as you can see, they're numbered. One, two, you got nine over here. I think there's a total of nine ponds, above ground ponds, and then he has some really big ones in the far back. Now they're all each separated with the shower curtains here. So there's no cross water contamination. So normally when a shipment from Japan comes, He'll have everything in this above ground pond from Suda Koi Farm. He'll have another bunch of koi fish from a different koi farm in this one. And there's no water cross contamination. So even splashes of water will not reach this pond because they're all shielded with these shower curtains. So he does take extra precaution to keep his fish safe and healthy until the quarantine system is now, over. Now my boy Anthony just recently came back from Japan and I was just talking to him about his trip. He had an awesome time, but I can't wait 
for his shipment of Shishidama goldfish, Tamasaba goldfish, and beautiful koi fish. And speaking of Tamasaba goldfish, he still has some here. Check it out. For $79.99, Tamasaba goldfish. He's got them. Look at he still has some Tamasaba goldfish. Now, the reason why I'm making a big deal about these Tamasaba goldfish is because it is a goldfish from Japan. It's the only place you can get them. They don't even like sell them in local fish stores. I rarely see them. It's normally at koi farms that have Tamasaba goldfish. Now, if you want some with a little size, these here are 150 and you can see how much more developed they are. Look at beautiful fins, beautiful coloration, beautiful patterns. I mean, look at this one over here. Look at that one. Woo! Look at them. Absolutely gorgeous. Tamasaba goldfish. My boy Anthony has them. There's a $150 bin right here. Oh, look at that. Ooh, I like that one. That one's pretty. $150. All right, I call this big baller lane right here. We got lane one and lane two. A lot more expensive koi fish, a little bit more developed, a lot larger. I believe they run between like 600 and in the multiple thousands of dollars here in these two rows. Let me see if he still has the, oh, he does have Benny Goy, the offspring of the dragon. These are all red koi, super rare, super hard to find too. I just love saying their title, the offspring of the dragon. Benny Goy, all red koi. You gotta have one of these in your koi pond. And my boy Anthony still has them. They're going for $350. That is a steal. Super rare koi. All hold red. Hold on, hold on, right? I know what you guys are thinking, okay? Some of you guys may be saying or yelling at the TV right now, I didn't got $1,000, $300, or even $150 to spend on one koi fish. It's okay, my boy Anthony's got your back. For all those people out there that are Balling on a budget. Rolling with the homies. Rolling with the homies. Yeah. That would be me. He's got koi fish imported from Japan for 50 bucks. Let's check him out. Just in case you guys thought I was lying, $50 koi imported from Japan. Look at these beauties. I see a lot of butterfly koi fish in here. These guys are little though, just so you know. All right, $50 imported from Japan. Look how pretty. Now, when I say little, I'm gonna say they're probably about four to five inches, give or take. A couple butterflies in here may be pushing six inches, but they are little guys, but they're so beautiful. Look at, packed with lots of color too. Not bad. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tour and the history lesson on Koi Enterprise. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. Let's teleport back home. I'm gonna show you what koi fish lost its color, what it used to look like, what it looks like now, and how we can prevent it from happening. All right, so I'll see you guys back home. Hawaiian punch out in three, two, one. Here we go. Whoo, just like that, we are back home. Now, before I flip this camera around and show you this beautiful koi fish that we picked up from Koi Enterprise, I wanna give you a heads up that we did purchase this koi fish from the live koi sale every Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That is a tongue twister. Now, I'm gonna flip this camera around. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what koi fish we picked up, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about why or how these koi fish lose their color, all right? Check it we out. We picked up this beautiful Shisui koi fish, one of my favorite types of koi fish because they're one of two koi fish that carry the color blue. You can see the blue, you got that reticulated zipper pattern on top, and then the beautiful orange, you got some beautiful lateral lines on the side of the koi fish. Now, you guys may be saying, hey, wait a minute, don't you already have a Shisui? Oh, well, you're absolutely right, I did. I actually had two. One of them, which was my butterfly shisui I absolutely love, magically disappeared when there was a bullfrog inside Tiki Falls 4.0. Yeah, that was weird, right? So I think my guy had a free meal on my expense. And then my second standard shisui that looks just like this actually lost all of its color. Let me pan this way and show you. He's right there. You see that all white koi fish right there at the bottom swimming? Yeah, that was my shisui. It lost all all of its color hopefully he comes up to the surface so we can get a really good look at him but yeah that kind of i guess you can say non-color koi fish was my shusui it lost its orange it lost its blue it lost everything and i saw it slowly changing i would say after two months of putting inside tiki falls 4.0 as you can see, they got a little scared, but 
I'm gonna actually have my boy Anthony talk a little bit about why and how koi fish lose their color. As you can see, the shisui is right there. We got a really good look at them. See, the orange is gone, the blue is gone, reticulated pattern gone. You know, it's just uh, uh, just it's just the koi, but it does have the lateral lines on the side, which is so weird to me. But anyways, we're gonna let Anthony talk a little bit about why and how koi fish lose its color. It's a great question, and I'm glad you brought that up because koi, believe it or not, do change. Sometimes they change for the better, sometimes not so much. But there are some factors that contribute to that in no particular order, but the first one I wanna mention is genes, genetics, mother and father. How strong are the genes? How strong was the color before the, when the fish was brought in and born? Then the second thing would be, in no particular order again, would be water quality, sunlight, AKA environment. Remember the environment happens in the water and also outside the water. So if fish are not exposed to sunlight or some kind of uh, you know, UV ray from uh, artificial lighting, uh, they can bleach out and not develop the colors as brightly or colors at all. And uh, lastly would be your diet, the food. They need certain nutrients in the food to actually be able to produce and sustain these colors. I always use the analogy of flamingos. If you don't feed the flamingos their natural diet of their krill and shrimp, guess what? They don't, they're not pink. They actually bleach out and they turn white. Okay, any in particular koi fish uh, that are likely to change colors or it could be any koi fish? It could be any koi fish, but more, more so in the United States, we deal with losing of the benny or the red color. Um, uh, there are some fish that tend to develop more sumi or we call it uh, shimmies, which are little black, I call them freckles, um, little black freckle spots. Kohaku tend to get them, asagis tend to get them, um, shishuis tend to get them as well. So those are just some of the ones, and mostly due to our waters here in the States, uh, in, in the U.S., tends to be a lot harder than the water that's coming in from Japan. Big shout out to Anthony. Thank you so much for that information. I hope you guys learned a little something from my boy Anthony. Now we're going to release this beautiful Shisui into Tiki Falls 4.0. Now I told my buddy Anthony that I'm going to gamble on this one and I have my fingers crossed that he came uh, from a really good bloodline of Shisui. So we're also rolling the dice, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and release him. Go ahead, buddy. I did treat him with Minfin for an hour, so that will definitely help. So pretty, right? Did I pick out a nice Shisui or did I pick out a nice Shisui? Look at him. He's hanging out, he's probably just kinda navigating his way, maybe a little shy, maybe a little stressed out. But what we will do is keep you posted on how his color is coming along. So there he goes, deeper into the abyss, getting greet, greeted by, oh, there's the other Shisui right there. It's funny how he just kind of picked up to that Shisui with no color. <laughs> He's kind of actually following that one there. Interesting. Look at him. He's hanging out. Shisui with no color and Shisui with color. Here he is, we will, I will keep you posted on how he's doing, what he's looking like, how his colors are adjusting. I'm hoping that he holds on to his colors because I absolutely love the Shisui koi fish. And as you can see, all the babies are doing great. Zero casualties still. The Shishidama are doing good. The Tamasaba goldfish doing good. The blind Shubunkin goldfish, Daredevil, he's doing great. He's still just patrolling his area but I'm super excited for the newest edition, which is my Shusui. I hope you guys learned a little something about how and why koi fish change or lose its color. Big shout out to my boy Anthony over at Koi Enterprise. Like I said earlier in the video, all of his links will be down in the description below. I will keep you guys posted and updated on the Shusui to see how the colors hold. Um, I got my fingers crossed. Um, like I said, it's always a gamble when uh, you have koi fish. You just never know. And I know a lot of you guys out there have had koi fish that have lost its color or changed colors on you. Hopefully, everything stays good. I will keep you posted. Take care, my ohana, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Much love and aloha. <laughs>